Yeah, we just took the chance that it, it'll all work out. <laughs> yeah, and it did. <laughs> As you admit to that kind of lifestyle, then, then things will happen. Hi, I'm Kathy. And I'm Tillman. And this is Namu House. This video is sponsored by Omaze. Go to omaze.com forward slash Florb and enter for your chance to win a custom made tiny house. Building and designing was uh, what I did for the last 20 years. I studied design, started with product design, but to build a space for ourselves was um, something that I always wanted to do. I built a number of exhibitions for museums and science centers, and then the whole tiny house movement been going on. We decided to move to California, and then we started designing and building. I was kind of familiar with this size, you know, building projects, not residential, but you know, in a way uh, I knew what had to be done and using a, uh, a materials that aren't toxic and that you can live and breathe in. That was important for us you know, building a tiny house. It was just a dream or fantasy in our heads. Um, and we actually didn't have any of the reality stuff figured out, which was very daring <laughs> and um, risky. But in a way, like having that as a fantasy in our heads and just setting it into movement without really knowing the real conditions just, just pushed us into this venture. This is the Namu house. I designed this with my wife. The siding of the house is a oiled cedar siding. There is a gap between the planks here and there's a uh, two inch air layer between the siding and the actual building. The sun hits this siding first and the hot air has room behind it to rise before it hits the building. We're reducing the heat that the building is exposed to by 25%. That already helps a lot in the California heat. It is important for a passive house like this to really reduce the air draft that is going outside of the building. And it all starts with making the building airtight so you don't heat or cool more than you need to. Everything has to be taped airtightly. And you use these this super strong textile tape to really attach it to the trailer. You tape over the seams and every intrusion into this envelope has to be um, has to be taped over. If you have uh, cables coming out, you have these gaskets, so you have a an watertight and airtight seal. They're made by a company called uh, Proclima, Proclima, and you can get them in the US over uh, a company called uh, 475. Uh, that's 475 spelled out dot com. If you uh, want to build a tiny house, you can go to a website called A Tiny Good Thing and they'll help you put together a kit with these materials. Picture window was kind of like one of the first design elements for the for the whole house. We wanted to sleep underneath a window like this and look outside and see the stars and um, trees. This is the driver's side of the tiny house and it has as little openings as possible because in a hot area you want to put that side towards the south so there's as little exposure as possible. We plumbed this for a regular flushing toilet. That's the black water line down there. But everything else, sinks and the shower and the washer, discharge down here and that just waters that side of the property. Another thing that it allows us to do is actually use a composting toilet. It's here in the bathroom and uh, it just um, separates liquids from solids and the liquids are just diverted outside the building and we tie that into our gray water. The whole house runs on a 30 amp circuit. The water heater is a 20 gallon electric water heater so it keeps those 20 gallon uh, warm. We want to stay away from fossil fuels. We got this trailer in March, just started building everything from scratch. It's less than 10,000 pounds. It's a standard 16 inch timber frame construction. Inside the cavities, we have sheep wool insulation. It's lightweight and allows for humidity to transfer. The room shouldn't be a plastic bag, but it should allow for some some humidity to transfer. And then on the inside, there's another uh, vapor barrier that actually decides whether or not there's uh, it opens or not. 
according to moisture difference. I mean, the whole design kind of lives from having that deck, right? The outswing French door entering the house and it's extending the living space. The deck is just a simple modular design, just four by four segments that are bolted together and quite a bit of work, but you know, with, with two people, you can, you know, unbolt them, put them in here and then trouble with the whole thing. We wanted to have this interior space be as simple as possible, but we still have a lot of stuff. So when you're entering the house, you see uh, that you're actually on top of the wheel well. We just decided on having a floor that is um, going over. That way you still have the maximum width of the house and you have just ample storage underneath the whole structure. Here's our pantry, uh, the toys for uh, our kid and then over here we have uh, other utilities and stuff got the inspiration from the japanese tea room they utilize the storage also underneath the space i mean you can really maximize the function of the space by not using furnitures because furniture is really you know force you to use that space as dining area and sleeping area we have our futon mattress which is our furniture but but we can always fold it away it's a soft furniture and i really like that idea um, for a tiny house because you want to just kind of maximize the openness of the space and not designate each space to be a certain thing and that was important for us a storage space down here it's about three feet deep. We store winter clothes away and Noe's toys. We have these two smaller doors and then the back door is one large piece for the futon mattresses to go away. We do our grilling and frying outside even on the grill that we have outside. So we kept our kitchen really light. It's, it's more like a kitchenette. And so we store our little portable stoves and toasters and water heater over there. But we try to keep this part really clean, although it's very challenging at times. <laughs> we, you know, store our food here. It's just enough storage for a household of three. This actually, we intended this area to be like a little extra bookcase area, but it turns out to be um, our son's little toy cabinet. <laughs> so this is built with one piece of plywood so that, you know, these grains would be cohesive. So this is like our little hallway to the bathroom area. <laughs> And we keep our fridge here. We were really in a dilemma of whether we should get a washer dryer or not, but because the climate here is so conducive to <laughs> air drying, we thought, okay, why don't we just get like a very compact washer? And it's working out fine. This is our composting toilet. Um, it's made from a Swedish company called Separate. We empty it about every 10 days. And we have, you know, here also a little cabinets. We have two windows, one on this side and one on the other side in the shower so that there's a good cross ventilation in the bathroom. We put a little, it's like a mini tub here. It's designed for RVs. We can bathe our son in here, we'll have a little soak when we want. Um, till is a little bit too big for the tub, but I can still fit in. Eventually, we want to actually use this um, as the level from which we're going to take showers. Um, but. That's what we're working on right now. We don't have uh, many furniture or tables or chairs. We do have, however, a fold-out table. It's, I think, 30 years old or so, and my um, wife's family brought that over from Korea. We just have that here on the floor, and we have all of our inside dinners in here. To anyone who's going into a build, you know, get some kind of you know, expertise or so, you know, do like a few weeks of a apprenticeship. Just go to a builder and ask them, can I look over your shoulder for a couple of weeks to see the framing, get a little bit of an idea of what's involved in putting walls up and and ask them how they're, how, how's their practice and how do they structure their day? That's effective working if you only have to run to the store once in a day. <laughs> <laughs> With every decision that you make uh, in, in building a house, you have a decision either to use material that is plastic, basically, or in some way recyclable. I think we should, you know, explore new materials that, that are out there, new aesthetics and new ways of living. I hope you enjoyed today's video on Kathy and Tillman. I'm very excited to announce today I have partnered with Omaze to offer you the chance to win a custom-made tiny house. 
taxes and shipping are all included and even better every donation benefits a great cause all you have to do is go to omaze.com forward slash florp and enter for your chance to win win a tiny home built by modern tiny living which is up to a hundred thousand dollars worth of value plus the taxes and shipping costs are covered fully customize the home of your dreams whether you want to add solar panels a party roof on the deck cozy sleeping lofts or a home office you can set up on your own property or hit the road and stay at a campground or an rv park easily thanks to modern tiny living's rvia certification so for your chance to win a custom tiny house worth up to a hundred thousand dollars go to omaze.com forward slash florp and enter now and the best part is that every donation benefits path and path's mission is to end homelessness so hurry that's omaze.com forward slash florp go there donate and good luck thank you have a great week big love click the link in the description below